afternoon race fans and welcome to the show tonight we got a good one here as we head old school to the north wilkesboro speedway with of course the riptide radio 802 next gen series here in the middle of their playoffs that is right a lot on the line here folks as checkered flag falls here in practice john ross Sits the top of the timing charts here with Rob Lowell second. Johnny Barker rounding out the top three. So we'll see if those drivers can hit their marks here in qualifying. As right now, we're heading straight into qualifying. Best of two laps here tonight. We'll determine tonight's starting order for 150 laps here at the North Wilkesboro Motor Speedway. Here we got the first car on track at the 21 g stone machine of rob lowell rob off of turn number four here the 21 crosses the stripe he is on the clock here in qualifying and we will have to see what kind of times these guys can throw down it seems like if you can get into the sub 20 seconds you are on a pretty good lap you'll see drivers kind of run in the middle there and one and two then three and four try and be as low as you can with how these front ends handle and uh what you can be able to do finding that grip because here at north wilkesboro we'll see guys searching with the short track package for that grip and see where the momentum's at as lowell lap number one good enough for a quick time here 19.31 lap number two 19.33 not as good but he will hang on to the pole position here as we take a look Let's take a look at the number 30 machine. You know, we'll see how Canton can do here. Nice and easy, nice and low there. And one and two for the number 30. First lap 20.05. So it seems like most of the field going to be in those 19 second reigns as John Ross completes qualifying. Cannot knock the 21 off of the top spot here. As Caden there, that lap not as quick here as A.J. Cawthon out here in the 25 machine. Cawthon lap number one, 19.51, just outside of the top five. He's going to try and find a little bit more speed, see if he can do that through three and four here for the final time for Cawthon. To the stripe he goes and does not improve, so it seems like first lap gonna be where it's at now we have the 13 machine of jason wiley rolling out to the speedway here tonight so the 21 machine sits just at the top of the timing and scoring here as wiley first lap in the books 19.86 he will try and find a little bit more speed if he can he could probably crack into the top 10 here as he's the first car on the outside looking in off of turn number four for the final time for the 13. Wiley does not improve that time by 19.86. So just slower. As that looks like. Most of the people done with qualifying here 12 cars of the 14 so far taking a time as yeah it looks like track pretty quiet so we'll go run a little bit early here tonight talk about our bg graphics poll award that going to the number 21 machine rob lowell in that g stone machine so congrats to rob there with the quick time here he will be leading the field with his ford mustang so congrats to rob on the bg graphics poll award here tonight at north wilkesboro speedway as that will pretty much do it for the race festivities as you know let's get a little race information here of course north wilkesboro one of the smallest tracks on the schedule just over though a half mile distance and you, you 
guys can kind of tell these ends look pretty similar but drive very very differently and you know you drive uphill on the front stretch then downhill going into turn number three on the back stretch it is a wild time these drivers will have their hands full here for 140 laps of course we got to thank all the series sponsors here at the 802 i racing lead that of course being riptide radio with the title sponsor bg graphics out of the woods crafts riptide radio dtl custom graphics and of course leaf guard as we will now get ready to run through tonight's starting order of our 14 drivers as here we go folks we got cars lined up here on the front stretch and let's go through tonight's riptide radio starting order start on the pole leading the field to green flag will be the 21 ford mustang being piloted by rob lowell to the outside this guy has seen a lot of front row starts we'll have another here tonight it is the 44 machine of john ross and our current points leader so Ross racing for a lot here tonight. Road number two. This guy put in a great qualifying effort. He will start in the top three. It's the 31 high velocity TV machine of Christian Delgado. Then to his outside has his team name on the car. That is the Wolf Pack. Racing number six of Johnny Barker. Then we head out to our top five here tonight. Rolling off P number five will be the 51 of Dalton Powell. To his outside will be the 25 machine. Now, of course, AJ Cawthon got to catch him there in qualifying. Then rolling off P number seven will be the 46 of Eli Raposa. Then to his outside will be the number five of Nate Catola. Then we head to row number five. To the inside will be the 62 machine of Frank Zingen. Then to his outside will be the 43 of Leroy Kalbonets. Rolling off P number 11 will be the 13 of Jason Wiley. Rolling off P number 12 is a Reba Canton in the number 30. Then we head back to our final row here tonight. These guys not taking a time. One of them being the 24 machine of Kenny Reel. And then starting shotgun on the field will be the number four of Brandon Guerin. Alrighty, so Brandon Guerin not allowed to take a lap here tonight. Was issued a penalty after Watkins Glen that last week. So that's why Guerin not able to take a lap here. But here we go, folks. We get the one to green. Take a look at your favorite driver's car because I can bet you these cars will not look this nice by the end of 140 laps here of short track racing here at North Wilkesboro. Fans are on their feet. Of course, this is still the 1987 layout of this track. Have not got a new rescan version that the current Cup Series races on just yet here in iRacing. So we have to do the next best thing, run in the 87 era, but here we go. iRacing pace car makes the hard left-hand turn. And Rob Lowell on the loud pedal. We go green flag racing as Lowell half a car length advantage. Ross will slot on in there to second. So then it looks like Delgado gonna have the advantage over Barker. Then everyone quickly single file out here tonight. Rob gonna lead lap number one here out in front. As these guys not quite sorted on out 100% as Don Powell trying to get back around AJ Coffin. Coffin with a better start on the high side. He's able to take one spot away here. So 14 cars taking the green flag. How many of them will be there by the end? Let me know if you're tuning on in and can reply. Let me know your guesses because I'm going to say right around the 12 mark. I think we'll have 
two casualties by the end of this one. As we take a look here, this guy quickly on the move. That's Brandon Guerin not wasting any time here tonight. Up four spots in the first four laps for the number four. So a lot of fours rolling around there here tonight. Last time by the number six machine of Johnny Barker. Fastest car on track here. That time not the fastest of everyone there, but best time on the speedway going to the number six here at the moment. Maybe just trying to push just a little bit to try and catch these race leaders just in case. Further on back, Jason Wiley and Frank Zingen battling on out for P number 11. Wiley able to get on by. Looks like the 62 going to slip further on back to now maybe the 43 machine. And it looks like maybe not. They will elect to just ride on around here for a little bit. Just make sure to click off those laps because even though it may seem a long race, long distance, 140 laps, you guys can see already these lap times quick and clicking off very quickly as we are already coming up to eight laps in of the 140. I feel like we just took the green flag here tonight. Some pressure being put on Delgado here for third. As same for the race lead. So both these battles about two tenths or about two car lengths in between each other. Both the race for the lead and for third here. So we'll keep an eye, see which one is unfolding here. It looks like the battle for P number three might be more interesting as Barker all over the back bumper of Delgado. You can tell Barker driving and then they're a little bit deeper, letting it roll in the middle, but then Delgado being very good at a low exit and being able to put the power down. That's not allowing Barker to get a run and be able to get around him. So Delgado running the slower kind of corner speed, let's say, but definitely allowing him to save his stuff for later in the run because it seems like at the moment we could have a pretty long green flag run here tonight. Raposa with a little bit of damage here. Not sure what happened to the 46, but I saw him dropping really quick on the standings. Looks like some left front damages. I'd have to guess probably got loose off of turn number four and got that pit wall so a tough break for the 46 as he now falls all the way back to p number 13 here we see kenny real making his way through the field so real up into eighth this is going for seventh and then brandon garen a little bit further behind both these the four and 24 both started on the back row here tonight both of them already up into the top 10 here as Contact here as Real almost goes around him and Katola make pretty significant contact there. It looks like both of them just going for the same race in real estate. So he will have to put his the hammer back down, try and reel back in the five, but now gonna have some company out the rear view mirror be a lot closer this time around when he does if he does catch the number five again. Out in front, still no changes up front. The battles have been anywhere from a quarter to half a second in between, but nothing any closer out in front as we will continue to try and watch how this shapes on out here tonight. You already see some guys kind of moving to the top side here in three and four, kind of not trying to drive that car down to the bottom really try and keep that momentum so i have a feeling as these tires continue to wear we will see drivers continue to move up this racetrack just still try and keep that momentum in these race cars as oh kenny real brandon garen look like they're big time out of sorts for garen and not sure with real but we may have to see what happened there as you see Kenny Real already loose down the front stretch. Of course, we're in super, super slow-mo. So let's try that again here at full speed. See what happened in one and two as Real out of sorts and 
looks like just trying to keep him down and Garen on the wrong trajectory and yeah just look like a lot of mistimed stuff there as now Brandon Garen losing more time here and Jason Wiley and the 62 machine both go on by so 20 laps in the books here already all been clean well I should say green flag laps don't know about super clean laps for most most of these drivers have been clean laps, but it has been eventful here for the first 20 going all green flag. Here we see the battle for third still on there. Barker still holding the pressure, but still not able to get around the 31 of Delgado. Delgado doing everything right here, keeping Barker behind. We will ride on board with Delgado looking back at the front end of Barker here. As you see there, Delgado a little bit into the wall as Barker a little bit faster on out, but Delgado still able to Roll that middle just perfectly able to get on the power. Just that little bit better, or at least even with Barker. And it's almost some contact there, but further on back, Kenny Real does get around Nate Catola that time, so. Real now going to try and set the sights on Powell, but quite a bit of gap, around three seconds between the two of them. As old Barker, big time slide here off at turn number two. Luckily able to keep that car underneath him for the most part, losing one spot to Cawthon, but losing a ton of time to Delgado about four seconds and total lost time there so it could have been a lot worse he could have been sending that thing to the infield care center but still a tough break for this number six further on back battle for just inside of the top 10 here 62 now bringing the pressure to the 13 and both of them kind of catching the five of Catola as well so this may be a battle of three cars before we know it Battle for the race lead, kind of closing up just a little bit within that two car lengths again as John Ross may be turning it on up and you can see our race leader is going to be in heavy, heavy lap traffic here in just a few laps as they click over to 30 laps in the books. So we're going to keep an eye here on the race lead with the lap traffic. See how this navigation goes here. It's Lowell leading the way, and then our points leader, John Ross, in second. So race leaders going on by the 30 will stay real low. So I got to love to see the sportsmanship there. Now here comes the fun three cars now in front of the race leader all of course battling for a position as well so zingan gets around katola and wiley so that puts him up to P number eight. And you can see here in front of the leaders of 43 of Cobblenets, the four of Garen battling it out, has a 46 of Raposa here. And here is the race leaders. This is where it gets dicey, folks.
race leader gonna have to drive it in there deep on the inside able to get around the 46 there now gonna try and get around the 43 looks like both those cars gonna stay up to the top side nice and easy Oh well, not able to clear, so now has to drive it in there deep contact there. He doesn't want to use up too much of his car nor his tires because John Ross can just be sitting there saying, all right, Rob, just clear me a path. I'll just follow you through, save my stuff, and then when we get to clean air, I'll go make my move to go for this race lead. Now Rob going to try and get around the floor of Garen. Looks like off of turn number two, going to get the pass done there. Now Ross going to try and do the same here in three and four. As it looks like, yes, he will clear him off of turn number four. So as now the race leaders will see quite a bit of open track here. Now, of course, next car might be going a lap down would be the 13 of Wiley and having the five of Catola right in front of him as well. With that lap traffic battle, Raposa does get back around Kalbanets for the number 12 spot. So, but of course right now the lucky dog going to the four of Garen. So Raposa might have to turn up the wick just a little bit to try and get in that lucky dog spot if we do in fact happen to get a yellow flag here is and garen way off the pace here not sure what's going on looks like back under speed here so maybe just trying to get things sorted on out here is now delgado gonna try and mix a match through it but here out in front less than a car length here 40 laps here in the books already this time at the stripe will be a hundred, well, under a hundred now to go. As John Ross continues to turn up the wick here, let's try and ride on board with Ross, see what he's looking at and seeing those lap times here tonight at North Wilkesboro. And you can hear just how little time these guys are really full throttle on these cars. It's all about hitting those perfect brake marks, hitting that center speed as we get a yellow flag on the speedway. So that's going to slow down the race in action. And we're going to try and figure out what happened out on the raceway here tonight to bring out our first caution flag for the Riptide Radio 802 Next Gen Cup Series. Looks like Brandon Garen rolling back here may have been involved. So we'll take a look here at the replay. And yeah, Garen just big time out of sorts there right at the apex. That rear end just snapping right around. We'll go look one more time here and try and see what happened. But yeah, you can see that back end just snap right on around. And we'll back it into the wall. Luckily, not too, too heavy of a hit. But we will see the whole field here tonight down on pit road so we'll keep an eye here at the back see who will win the race off of pit road as i think these drivers if they can't quite get there on fuel from here it should be very very close so As off of pit road, no real big, big shakeups, let's say, here. As Lowell leads the field off of pit road, then Ross Cawthon. Cawthon making up a few spots. He will restart P number three. Delgado down to fourth. Barker, he's probably pretty excited to see this yellow as he will roll off P number five here tonight. Two 
few drivers pretty excited for that yellow. I believe it's Jason Wiley and Nate Katola just about to get put a lap down. This yellow flag saving them from going a lap down as I believe looks like Leroy Cobb and Matt's going to get the wave around here with one to go, get back on the lead lap. And I think Eli Raposa should be back on the lead lap with this yellow. So first yellow falling here on lap 44 of 140. So hopefully we'll get another chance to do another good long green flag run, see how these drivers and their cars kind of play on out. As this time by, we should be getting the one to go signal. Yes, we do. So here we go. We will re-rack them, re-stack them, and get ready to go back to green flag racing here at the classic North Wilkesboro Speedway. Lowell and Ross, the front row, same as the start. Getting ready to do it now closer to the 50 lap mark. If you guys were paying attention to the start there, this green flag comes out very soon after the pace car moves and Lowell not wasting any time to get on the loud pedal. He gets away with a great, great jump over the field. He's trying to check out here early. So now Cawthon able to get clear for third. Here comes Barker for fourth over the 31 of Delgado. Delgado might be in the wrong lane here as he continues to get freight train here. Is now Kenny Real going to try and get around the 31 machine? One car out of sorts off of turn number two. That's a five of Katola. He will at least keep it facing the right direction. Jason Wiley slow on the track, and that will bring out our second yellow flag of the night. Going to see what happened to the number 13. We saw him slow against the top of the wall there. You can see the right front definitely kind of whacked down out a little bit. So we will have to see what Wiley, what happened to Wiley. As if I had to guess, probably got the opening in the back stretch. Maybe got into some of that classic eye racing wall glue. Is, yeah, actually, no, just got some tire spin there. Got behind it and, yeah, smacked the wall pretty good with that right front. Probably. Well, I should say definitely going to use up one of those fast repairs here tonight. So it looks like the number four machine, Brandon Guerin, getting the lucky dog here. That will put him back on the lead lap here tonight. So had to start in the back, brought out our first yellow, but now back on the lead lap. Hopefully Guerin can, I know he's hoping for it, but to turn around his night the second half of this race. So under our second yellow flag here tonight, as we continue to click off laps here in the low 50 mark. I love to say it, folks. Old Daryl Waltrip used to say, cautions breed cautions, and that's exactly what happened here tonight. We made it about 45 laps to our first yellow, but then right after our first one, we got our second one right away. So these drivers get plenty of pace laps here tonight. North Wilkesboro already has a pretty long pace lap. I think it's I think it's at least four laps around this racetrack and then you add an extra lap on top of that to allow lap down drivers to pit it you get some pretty long pacing laps here tonight or i should say anytime you go to north wilkesboro speedway on the i racing simulator but i believe this time by yes it does lights go out on the pace car and around the speedway and looks like 
Rob electing to take the high side on the start. So we will have to see how this works out, but I believe this allows the teammates at the Wolfpack race to line up nose to tail. That's exactly it. So if I was a betting man, I would say we'll see a good start from the six of Barker as well. But here we go. Rob Lowell from the top side, lean the field to green. Once again, wasted no time. Ross able to keep a nose to the inside. But here comes Barker up top. Johnny Barker a little loose there off a of turn number two. Ross will shut the door, so a six will go right up to the back bumper. Maybe give him a little shot as, speak about shots, Kenny Real almost goes around off a shot from the 25 machine of Cawthon. Somehow those drivers hanging on to those race cars on the front stretch. I, that was a great save as Real continues to save this race car. I, those tires got to be hot on the 24, but man, I got to get these guys props because here on North Wilkesburg, especially on the front stretch, you know, you get a couple cars sideways and this track can get blocked up and kind of nowhere to go in a hurry. This run, it looks like Ross using up his stuff a little bit more. These leaders definitely pushing hard here, not saving as much tire as that first run. So Ross going to make Lowell try and use up his stuff. We'll see how this works out for both these drivers. As it goes, Lowell, Ross, Barker, Delgado, and Zingen. He's having a good run there with that shakeup, able to grab a top five spot and so far hanging on to it. So heading up to the front here, one of the closest battles on track is, oh man, Lowell definitely overdrove it into one, able to get on the loud pedal and just keep in front of Ross here, but Ross will get a nose to the inside as we get a yellow flag. Jason Wiley rolling again slowly on the speedway. So Ross definitely didn't want to see that yellow flag time out there because man, he was about to make a move as, oh, Kenny real without a nose. I saw that nose cover sliding down the track there. Not sure what happened there. So we're going to try and figure out. As Wiley once again, loose off a of turn number four, just got behind it. And, oh, there's the damage to the 24. Kenny real having nowhere to go. Will clobber the 13 and, yeah, this bumper cover going to slide on off here and turns number three and four. And there you go. You see it disconnect and then end up right around that pit gate opening there in turn number four. So real down on pit road using one of those fast repairs here tonight. These drivers only getting two here out in front. Looks like no takers down pit road. So... As we approach the halfway point, we are under our third caution here tonight. Also, while we got a minute, you see their logo up in the left side. It's the Riptide Radio Next Gen Cup Series. Of course, Riptide Radio has the sounds of the salt sea and sand broadcaster from Ocean Drive, South Carolina. Free download for the best in Carolina beach and boogie music. That is, of course, Riptide Radio. Also, if you want to support Turn 3 with their partnerships here in the first half of 2024, that's, of course, with Premier Setup Shops. We got a link there in the broadcast. Even if you don't plan to uh, purchase anything, just at least uh, click it. Tell your friends to click it. At least gives us some uh, clicks and shows us some support and uh, shows us why we are work working with with a broadcaster. As we'll have to see where this 21 car elects to restart this time. 
The first one picked the bottom the last time to the top. It looks like here at the stripe, it will be choose time. It looks like the 21 this time taking the bottom again. And that lines up pretty well with his teammate lining up P number three. So it looks like we'll probably have a green white checker to our halfway point here tonight at North Wilkesboro for, I want to say we're already playoff race number four in the books already. Let me check the schedule here. Yeah, playoff race number four as we go back. Green flag race and Lowell, another great start out in front. Here comes Barker to the inside of Ross. They will go door to door here off of turn number two. It's going to be a drag race into turn number three. Ross not quite clear as Kava Nets looks like involved in this fourth yellow flag here tonight. We'll take a look here, see what happened off of turn number two. And looks like, oh, Kyle, and that's maybe didn't get the call from the spotter that Cawthon was going to be there. Cawthon just closed up a little bit too quick, and the 43 had no clue the 25 was going to be to his outside. But luckily, rest of the field able to make evasive maneuvers, and that one only a two-car incident here tonight. But here, once we got that first yellow flag, we have not stopped seeing this yellow cloth out on the speedway. Pretty much four consecutive yellow flags here tonight. And this time by at the stripe, we will see for the 21 machine, he has led every lap, so... Lowell going to walk away with the most laps led here. He will see the cross flag. So we are already halfway down, halfway home here in tonight's playoff race from North Wilkesboro. And, of course, with that premier sponsorship while we're under the yellow flag, I'm going to go play quick for you guys, and we'll get back to green flag race in action when we come back. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be right back. Alrighty, folks, and you see, he didn't even miss much. We're still under the yellow flag, and I believe this time by here at the stripe in about a half a lap, we will get the choose from Lowell. And I would think with Barker starting once again, P number three, we'll see the 21 elect this inside lane now in the second half of tonight's race. So lights go on out here. The field will double it on up. And as the field stands, the guy sitting in P number seven, up seven spots from where he started. That's Brandon Guerin back on the lead lap, has a fresh car underneath him and looking pretty good. He's rolling off here, P number seven on this restart. But Front row has been the same every single restart here. It is the 21 and 44, and we go back to green flag racing as Ross able to keep a nose to the outside of Lowell. Now Ross looking across on over, had some momentum down the back stretch. We'll think better of it. Has one car in the wall. That's the number five machine. He will get a piece of the wall there off of turn number four. Looks like not too, too much damage to the right side. So should be able to keep pace with the rest of the field here tonight. You 
see now Kenny Real going on through. Real now up six spots from where he started. So a man on a mission here today. Don Powell was pressuring the 62. Not quite there. Is some tire smoke here as John Ross makes a late dive to the inside of the 21 machine. Somehow no contact, at least from Apex off between the two of them. And oh man, it is go time, I guess, for Ross as he has put all sorts of pressure on the 21 machine. Let's ride on board with Ross and see him working this wheel and this race car to try and get this race lead. Oh, you, you see him there big time sideways. Going to lose a lot of time and a handful of spots. As looks like we'll be able to slot back in behind the 31 and next to the 62 machine. So with that slide, Ross losing a bit of time and you don't see too many mistakes from John Ross. So this field better capitalize why they can here tonight. As Ross still struggling with that right rear tire, it, all it takes is these drivers get that thing hot once, light it on up, get some this thing out of sorts with some wheel spin and then it's probably at least two, if not three laps of kind of temperamental throttle control to really cool back off and get it back onto you. But you do not want to keep on if it gets hot to continue to make it hotter because this thing with this tire model, these V7 tires, man, they do not like the heat. Further on back, we got a battle for a top 10 spot. Leroy Cobblenet's trying to get here in the top 10 here once again, taken away from Nate Catola. Looks like able to get the pass done there in three and four. We had back up to about the mid pack here tonight, the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh position. All these guys battling on out here. So Lowell leading the way about just over half a second over Johnny Barker and about another half second to Christian Delgado. And then Frank Ziegen in the 62 hanging on to fourth and then John Ross still in only P number five. So Ross is far from done here tonight as you see him driving in there deep to get right to the back bumper of that 62 machine. We'll look to the inside here in turn number one. Battle for P number four. Ross down low in the 44, 62 is Zingen. Zingen able to defend. Here comes Kenny Real, thinking a little bit optimistically. He's gonna try and make a move to the high side. Not quite enough speed to make it stick there. Folks, I know the likes of Lowell, Barker, Delgado really like to see Ross at least still behind the 62 because if Ross does get clear, you know, he's going to be a man on a mission because at this point we're closing in on, you know, 50 to go. That sounds like a lot of time, but with lap times still under the 22nd mark, things happen here very, very quickly as old oh, contact there. Zingan and Ross. Ross will get heavy contact there to the inside wall. Somehow that car doesn't look killed here tonight. Doesn't bring out a yellow flag, but that 44 race, you don't see this too often from this guy. His race going bad to worse. As now with that, that opens up the door for Kenny. Real, real all over the back bumper of the 62 now. This would be a battle for P number four as Kenny Real needs a good night here tonight because Real at the moment 
since NP number two in the points, about 18 points back from John Ross, and then Steve Ritter sits P number three, and Ritter not here tonight. So then it goes to Christian Delgado sitting P number four, and Delgado's about 24 points back. And both those guys currently sitting in front of Ross here tonight. So Rio's going to have to try and take as much advantage as he can to try and increase this points kind of gap. Or I should say decrease the points gap to the points leader. As now we see Brandon Guerin, John Ross side by side here tonight. This is the battle for P number six. So Ross trying to get some spots back. And these two had contact last week at the Glen. Ross still loose on corner exit. Still I don't think has cooled off that right rear enough, or if so, that right rear's gone on this 44 machine, and he's got to hope and pray for a yellow flag. At least not be the cause of the yellow flag. Here just outside of the top 10 here tonight, have a three-car battle, Nate Katoa, Jason Wiley, and AJ Coffin all find themselves here in this battle. Hawthorne, you can see a lot of damage to that 25 machine. He's hoping for another yellow flag before he knows it, but these guys getting closer and closer to going a lap down. Right now, everyone's still back on the lead lap here tonight. As we see our first, no, unscheduled stop from Dalton Powell. A lot of right side damage to the 51, and that is a tough break as we see here once again, John Ross, Brandon Guerin, once again, side by side. And like I said last time, they were some contact between the two of them in that first corner last week at the Glen. I think they've had time to discuss it and for sure review it. But it looks like not too, too much hard feelings as they're able to get that pass done cleanly this time. Out in front, Rob Lowell leading the way over Johnny Barker. Barker's still hanging about that half second gap to our race leader, Delgado, hanging on to P number three, final podium spot. Kenny Real trying to reel in that 31 machine. He's up to P number four. And at the moment, I'm going to see how much faster last time by actually shows Delgado faster than Real, but I think hitting some lap traffic a little bit at a weird time. And Frank Zingen in the 62, rounding out the top five. So this time by folks, for the 21 machine, we will see triple digit laps complete here tonight. That is right. We are up to lap 100 of the scheduled 140 lap distance. I forgot to mention, we've been on a long green flag run, you know, had those four yellows. If we get some yellows towards the end of tonight's race, we do have two attempts at a green white checkered, but I know these top three, for sure the top two, don't wanna see any chance of any green white checkers here tonight. They're hoping it just goes clean and green here to the finish. And I believe Lowell, I believe, would pick up his first win of the season. Let me check. It looks like, yes, it would be. So 21 machine racing for a lot here tonight. I believe the top three, everyone in it, racing for their first win of this season. And it would come at a great time, middle of the playoffs. This is what some of these drivers need. And if you look closely here, especially in the middle of the corner here, you can see a little bit of right front damage to the 21 machine. So you gotta wonder, is that affecting the handling? Does that affect how this car turns? And here we go, Delgado's turning up the pace. We kind of saw him, you know, doing a different line than Barker when the roles were flipped at the beginning. Barker a lot quicker in the corner and whatnot, but I think as this run's gone on, Delgado has had better pace. And yeah, about a tenth quicker last time by. So Delgado 
going to be closing up to the gap here pretty quickly and faster than both the cars in front of him. But that also goes to the same to the 24 of real. So 35 laps to go here tonight and it's about to get racy side by side almost racing there for P number two and it looks like race for P number five also he not up as John Ross able to get around the 62 machine so Ross back in the top five here. Yeah, it almost looked like Barker was going to leave the top side open to the 31 machine, but then I think maybe realized who he was racing and what the stakes were and said, I got to turn it back up. So here we go, riding on board with the roof, looking back at with Johnny Barker, looking back at Delgado, and now Kenny Real as Real closes on in here in a hurry. As Delgado can roll that middle very nice. He gets to the outside of Barker. They go side by side down here in turns number three and four. And here we go, battle for P number two. Barker down low gets big time loose. Delgado able to keep the momentum. Here comes Barker washing up the speedway. And Delgado should be able to put the power down and beat him on the drag race. Yes, he does. So Christian Delgado goes up to P number two. Here comes Kenny Real to the high side. He almost puts it in the wall there in three and four. Just trying to get a nose to the outside of the six. He'll try again here in one and two. And yeah, it looks like Johnny Barker, that right front, definitely going on that race car here with 30 laps to go. So now what does Delgado have? What does Kenny Real have left in the tank? Can they reel in our race leader? Because Kenny Real is going to be in a very tough spot because he's going to want to get around Delgado, but you can't spend too much time messing around for P number two, or in this case, still P number three. I mean, I didn't give Johnny Barker enough credit. Still hanging on to the inside line of Kenny Real. So Barker doing a great job holding up his 24 as Looks like Real finally able to get clear. It looks like the 62 machine out of sorts. He will get that thing back rolling. And we stay green flag racing. He was able to spin kind of off the racing surface. So we stay green flag in this kind of secondary long green flag run here tonight. Christian Delgado getting around the five of Catola. Now the 24 of real will do the same. So here we go, folks. It's going to come down to who wants us more with about 25 laps to go. Lowell has a lead, but Delgado and real faster, but have to make up some time. As 01 car in the grass here on the backstretch. That is the number six of Johnny Barker. Barker will get stuck on the apron here and he won't be able to get it rolling. So Barker bringing out the fifth yellow here tonight. And I know his teammate, the 21 machine or Lowell, doesn't want to see that by any means. We're going to go take a look here at the turn three replay. See what happened to Johnny Barker off of turn number two. Trying to get around the five car. That is a lap down. And oh, it looks like Katola just gets a little bit loose. And Barker definitely some neck code there to the right front. But yeah, definitely sent him down into the grass. And that's a tough break because Barker was running in that P number four spot. And now hands out over to the 44 of John Ross. Here we go, final pit stops of the night. Lowell gonna lead them on in. Everyone else who stayed out on the racetrack is a lap down, so we'll try and get the wave round by the end of this one. 
Will we see any two tire takers or anything like that? At the moment, it seems yes, we will. 24 car, first car off of pit road. Kenny Real with two tires. Then Lowell, Delgado, and Ross all taking four. Oh, man, folks. It is going to get interesting from here under our fifth yellow flag of the night in our countdown clock. This time at the stripe, we see 22 laps to go. As it looks like Jason Wiley has not come down pit road here, so Wiley's staying on out, maybe getting some bonus points for leading the lap. As when we go back to green flag racing, folks, we should be inside of 20 laps to go it's going to be a sprint to the finish with some strategy and it's going to be a wild one and i am excited to see how this thing shakes on out for the first time tonight the 21 machine not out in front Alrighty, here we go, folks. Wave around cars down and away. Looks like Kenny Real elects the inside lane here on the restart. Remember, Real on two tires, rest of the field on four. Here we go. Going to be under 20 laps to go here tonight. Real and Lowell on the front row here. Real in charge of the restart. 24 machine on the loud pedal here. We go back to green flag racing. Delgado and the 21 of Lowell. A little bit of contact there. I think Delgado got a little bit of wheel spin there. That allows John Ross. Here he comes back through the field. He's back up to P number three. Further on back, side by side racing here as Brandon Guerin gets on through. Same with Frank Zegan and AJ Cawthon right in the mix as well these guys can throw a blanket all under them these guys looking for as much as they can get here in the last now 17 and a half laps johnny barker right here but he is the first car one lap down barker gonna hope for a yellow flag before it's all said and done and get back on the lead lap because right now he's in the lucky dog spot out in front, Kenny Real able to hold off Lowell on four fresh ones. So it is going to be, Real's going to have to be absolutely perfect from here on out to keep the 21 behind. A little bit of contact there. Tried the bump and run, but that gets Lowell loose. And now he gets big time loose off of turn number two. The man that has put on a show all race long through the grass, back up to the field, but this will cycle him back all the way in P number seven. A heartbreak to the 21 team. Now with that, it cycles John Ross up once again to P number two. He will have a chance at the win here tonight. After the night he has had, he's going to go for it here. Ross looking to the inside of Real. Real has done a master class of defending with only two tires on that car. Man, further on back from fifth on back. These guys all under a blanket. These guys racing their hearts out here. As Delgado able to get away. Zingin going to try and get away from Garen. But Koth and Lowell right here battling. Lowell going to try and rebound as many spots as he can before it's all said and done as we see a slow 17 of wiley he is off the pace probably heading back to pit road no he stays on out looks like better pace here as brandon garen goes around on the front stretch he will loop it to the outside wall 
And this race isn't over yet. We see the sixth yellow flag here tonight. And we'll try and see what happened as Garen and Barker, a little bit of door tag there. And then Garen tries to hang on to this race car, makes contact with the inside and outside wall. And luckily, man, Nate Katola just squeezing on by there. Let's ride on board with Katola and see what he saw here. You'll see a four car come quickly across the racetrack here. As it looks like, oh, he's low, he's low, he's low. Quick, he's to the high side. And you can see the reaction quickly aiming to the left there. And folks, when we go back green flag racing, that's right. It's going to be under a 10 lap shootout. As I'm going to go take a drink of water here, get mentally prepared for this because this could very well be a wild barn burner to the finish. Alrighty, here we go, folks. As, no, not quite. I guess we get the two to go signal that time by. So, a lot of pace in here under the yellow flags of North Wilkesboro. So far, six cautions. And truthfully, guys, I don't know if we're done just quite yet. As top five looks like the falling Kenny Real, John Ross, Christian Delgado, Frank Zingan. And then Rob Lowell rounding out the top five on this restart. We will have to see who wants this thing the most. Of course, no takers down on pit road at this point. It is all about that track position. Real will elect the inside lane here. And when we go back to green flag, it will only be six laps to go. The field will double on up here. Kenny Real in control. John Ross to the outside. Real on the loud pedal. We go back to green flag race. Delgado gets loose. He will spin it down low. Come back up the speedway. But he is out of harm's way. We stay green flag racing. Out in front. Single foul for the top four. Zingan out of sorts. Lowell to the inside of Koth, and this is a battle for P number five. Nate Katola into the wall there. We see five to go this time by. Five laps to go. Katola trying to have a run of his life just outside of the top five. Sitting in P number six. He's put on a great show as we see Dalton Powell trying to work around the top side. Maybe bring along the six of Barkers. Now Katola, as I was just saying that, Big time out of sorts on the front stretch. He will drop down to P number nine. Out in front, one car in the one wall. That is Lowell in the 21 machine. Big time right side damage to the 21. He will once again drop all the way back to P number seven. But you can see that wall, or I should say, that wall probably to his pancake, but for sure the right side of the 21 machine. Out in front, a lot been happening, but here out in front, two car length the gap. This time by Kenny Real, we'll see popsicle sticks up in the air. Two laps to go from North Wilkesboro. John Ross all over the back bumper, at least at the apex in three and four. One and two, Real a little bit better through that corner. 
Ross will drive it down all the way to that inside curb. Try and make that corner as short as possible. As this time by, we see the white flag. One more lap to go. Can Kenny Real hang on to it? Just has to get a good run down the back stretch and be able to roll this momentum through three and four for the final time. Kenny Real leads the way over John Ross. Kenny Real will hang on to it. Real will win. Ross in second. Cawthon. Oh, sorry. Zingen in third. We'll be talking to him. Cawthon fourth. Lowell in fifth. As man, what a show. Kenny Real. Kenny Real picking up the win. So hopefully he can. Uh, limp this thing on around do some burnouts for the fans and then of course we'll be talking to all three of these drivers before it's all said and done but here we go Kenny reel back on the front stretch here tonight and hopefully gonna burn them on down this will be reels I believe sixth win of the season so I believe that ties them up with John Ross Real burning them on down for all the real and maybe even some Jeff Gordon fans out there. Or maybe William Byron. As we will go to commercial break on the other side, we have our post ratio. So don't go anywhere, folks. We will be right back after this one. iRacing is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all around the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scan with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics, engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 170,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsports organizations like NASCAR to deliver virtual races based on the real-life NASCAR Cup Series, as well as many other series on the NASCAR ladder. iRacing also features team racing, providing a variety of options for members to create and manage their own teams, race with friends or real-world teammates in full-length endurance events like the 24 Hours of Daytona, Spa 24, or the Bathurst 12 Hour. Additional partners include IMSA, World of Outlaws, Supercars, and IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own Indianapolis 500, Bathurst 1000, Chili Bowl, and many more iconic events. This is iRacing, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car. Sign up today at iRacing.com. folks we come back here at the north wilkesboro speedway and gonna be dialing up first our third place finisher that being the 62 of frank zingen frank do you got a copy it's brett the jet in the booth here yeah i got you how you doing pretty good man how about yourself well, definitely a crazy racer especially at the end tell us what you saw both out your windshield and that rear view mirror and how did you end up third after a pretty crazy race overall? Yeah, I got lucky. Got uh, spun my tires a couple times. They were kind of wearing down. First run was great. Started way in the back, saved some tires, and then realized I could push harder. And then some of these cautions came out, and I started pushing, and my tires started going away. But luckily, I was able to hold on to a third place. Yeah, third place at a very tricky track like North Wilkesboro. I mean, it seemed like just keeping that right rear under you, especially on corner exit, was the name of the game here tonight. Was that the case for you in the 62? 
Yeah, definitely. Especially, uh, you got to stop looking at all your widgets and all the stuff you got around you and timing and stuff like that. You come off the corner, look up for a second, you're already down in the fence. So it's hard to uh, keep the tire under you when you're hitting the gas out of full throttle. Oh, yeah. And like you said, things happen very quickly around North Wilkesboro. You guys under 20 second laps and this race, even 140 laps went by pretty quick. But I still bet, you know, feeling it there after that amount of laps at any track. Yeah, it was definitely a fun race. Uh, very hard to pass here, but as long as you save your tires, you can get by some people. Yeah, that is definitely the case. And luckily, having some good green flag runs there in the middle always helps the causes. Frank, you know, I haven't got to chat with you here in the post race. I always like to ask first time when I uh, chat with people is, what's your sim setup like? You know, give some insight to the fans, you know, what do you have in front of you looking at, or maybe what do you got for wheel and pedal combos? I got a Fanatec uh, V3 inverts for pedals, and then just a regular 920 Logitech, and then I got four monitors for TVs. Nice. There you go. They got the triple screen set up, and I'm sure that came in very handy here tonight on North Wilkesboro. Absolutely. The only hard part is looking at the fourth screen above all three of them to see timing and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, I bet that that's a lot of information you got on you. But, you know, at the end of the day, that is kind of what the race is all about, getting as much data as you can and uh, figuring out the best way to utilize it. Absolutely. All righty, Frank. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you here tonight. So before we let you go and celebrate a podium finish here from North Wilkesboro, I'm going to go let you thank who you got to thank, either on a 62 car or who maybe is tuning in at home. I want to thank all our sponsors, uh, Leaf Guard, uh, our Leaf Filter, uh, BG Graphics, uh, Riptide Radio, Out of the Woods Crafts, all of them. And then my sponsor on my car is for CED uh, Awareness. And that is all I got to say. And thanks to you for broadcasting us. Yep, no problem, Frank. Thanks for coming out each and every week, putting on a show, putting on some great racing, and glad we finally got to talk to you. And with it being the playoffs, you know, things starting to try to wrap on up, of course, halfway through the playoffs. What race do you have, real quick question, what race do you have still on the schedule kind of circled, or which one are you looking forward to in these last three races? Honestly, all of them. You gotta, you gotta finish good at all of them. So, that's what <laughs> yep, we're looking at. That you do, and I, I like that mentality, Frank. So, you have yourself a great rest of the night, and go celebrate this podium position. And we will catch you on the flip side. Sounds good. All righty, have a great rest of your night, Frank. You too. All righty, folks, that was our third place finisher, Frank Zingen, and the sixty-two machine. And now let's dial up. Our runner-up finisher here tonight, it is the 44 of John Ross. John, you uh -huh. got a copy. It's Brett the Jet in the booth here. I have you, Brett. All righty, man. You finished second here tonight. Got to feel pretty good about that with the up-and-down race you had. Tell us about this race here at the tricky North Wilkesboro Speedway. I, I think you said it right. It, it was. It's very tricky. Um you know, that, that first stint, uh, I probably should have pushed a little bit harder in qualifying and tried to snag the pole. And, um, you know, Rob did a great job and, and snagged it when he jumped out there. The track is so uh, – for, for the next gym, it's really hard to roll the center of the turn and get a good drive off because even if you could get underneath of somebody, um, you know, that middle lane was just good enough to pinch you down where you couldn't roll the center and get back in the throttle. So so the, the angles were really tough to try to stay down at the bottom and get underneath of somebody. So um, I tried raw, but a, a handful of times I felt like if we could ever get some clean air, we would be in good shape. But um, But, you know, I got loose a few times, and then once my tires got hot, uh, man, it was so hard to drive. Thank goodness that, that caution came out. And really the only passing that I did was, uh, you know, when people either got loose or we had a couple of cautions that I got to jump on them. Yeah, I tell you what, the name of the game, it seemed like all night long, was keeping that right rear under you. And like you said, even, John, it came to bite you once. And, you know, it got hot that one time with that big kind of uh, tire spin. And then from there, it seemed like you had no drive off. 
Yeah, that's that's what happened. Cause what what you know, I settled, tried to settle back in and give it a couple of laps to cool off and to give me a couple of laps to cool off too. And um, by by then, once it uh, you know once it went green for a little bit, um, you know I had abused those tires from those couple of slides that I had, so I just didn't have any tire, um, you know that that second long run. So so thank goodness. Now once you know once we had good fresh tires, I thought we were quick as anybody, but uh, we just could never get fresh air tonight. Yeah, that it seemed like you always had a car in front of you and on top of that, a car right in front of you. And I'm sure that doesn't help the uh, aero tightness, even though it's still kind of slower speed. You know, it still has a little bit of effect on these cars. It, it does. The next gen, I think, more than a lot of them. And um, yeah, and, and we had a great like Kenny and I had a great race uh, there at the end. That was that was a lot of fun. I will tell you. Um, you know, this, this track being in the playoffs was tough because it kind of is a one lane track, but it also lent, um, to probably what I would think from a broadcasting standpoint, one of the best, um, closest races for one and two that we've had this year. So that, that, that battle between Rob and I was great that first run and, and Kenny and I there at the end. So I, I thought it was a great race. Yeah, I thought so as well, John, as you guys put on a great show once again here and you and Kenny real duking it out to the line. You two, one and two in points, and now left on the table, three rounds left. John, how are you feeling with the points lead? I, I feel pretty good, and I was just talking to Kenny in the in the waiting booth. It's it's going to be a shootout because Kenny's really good on mile and a half. He's good on tire saving, and, and, and I am too. I prefer – uh, you know, Nashville and Michigan and Kansas to, you know, like in North Wilkesboro. So, um, I, you know, I, I think we're going to have some good races for you. I think it's going to be a fantastic run to the end. Nobody's points are safe. You know, um, Steve wasn't here tonight, and I think he's third in the points, and he's going to be fast. Um, so you just never know what's going to happen. I, I look forward to it. I, I think it'll be an exciting finish. Oh, I think so as well as we got some exciting tracks in Nashville, Michigan, and Kansas still to go, and it's going to be exciting, like you said, John. So before we let you go, we're going to go, go through kind of the standard spiel, it seems like, week in and week out, John, once again on the podium here tonight. And once again, here, I'm going to hand over the mic to you and thank who you got to thank. Yeah, thanks, Brad. I, I appreciate it, and uh, great job. I, I know you – you uh, you took us over here at, at the cup side, um, you know, about one or two races before the playoffs started. So you've done a fantastic job calling the races. I certainly appreciate that. And like I said, I always go back and watch it. And I, I want to thank my, my wild man team. Christian uh, was in some some good positions. I thought he had a really good long run car tonight. Um, and, and, you know, these uh, it's short track racing, man. So you kind of beat and bang a little bit and uh, and it didn't work out for him. But and, and Leroy, he had a tough night, too. So I uh, want to thank those guys for getting in the chat with me and, and really helping me out and yeah man I, I look forward to nashville that's kind of my home track in real life so i look forward to it next week yeah that one should be a good one here john so once again john you have yourself a great rest of the night and we'll catch you i guess for your home race next week at nashville thank you sir appreciate it brett all righty folks that was john ross our points leader heading into tonight and walking away with it with a runner-up finish. Now we'll go down to victory lane and talk to the man of the hour. It is the 24 car of Kenny Real. Kenny, do you got a copy? It's Brett the Jet in the booth here. Yeah, we got a copy. All righty, man. We got to ask, how where, where'd you come up with that call with two tires? And then how were you able to keep those cars behind you for the end of this race? Uh, I have to give credit to my teammate Frank. He's the the one that uh said something about taking two, and that's uh how we came up with that. I end up listening to him taking two, so I get out in the lead there because the track's just so hard to pass, and that was the only way I could even probably even get up front and have a chance for it. Yeah, that was a brilliant call, Kenny, from you and your teammate to put put yourself in some great track position and then not only that to be able to hold off those drivers behind because even with those two tires i mean that thing had to feel pretty loose on corner exit i mean everyone was dealing with that here today it seemed like um actually for it felt pretty good i the only time i got loose was coming to the checker there i was sawing at the wheel the whole time off turn four just trying to keep it straight but other than that, I was pretty easy on the throttle all day. I never 
got loose off the corner too much. If you got on a throttle too hard, it would get it would snap from you. But we we kept it underneath us, and uh, yeah, there at the end, I thought I was gonna lose it because how loose I was coming off the corner, and I was just sawing at the wheel the whole time, and end up wrecking it after the line. Oh man, yeah, shades of uh Bristol almost with uh Terry Labani there, but. Yeah, Kenny, I got to say, you did a heck of a job there hanging on to that thing. And, yeah, especially off the of turn number four coming to the checkered, you ain't lifting off the throttle there. You're just going to saw out the wheel, keep it hopefully pointed in the right direction and uh, keeping that foot in it. <laughs> yeah, cause I was because I, I was thinking John was going to give me a, a bump there because that's really the only time you can pass. You know, Rob, he was trying to do the exact same thing because he was yep. 100 times faster than me and you know, it's just so hard to pass. You got to bump somebody up out of the groove to try to get underneath them and pass them. And I mean, he did everything right. It was just his car just snapped on him coming off the corner, trying to get back on the throttle. Yeah, it did seem like that. That was a tough break for the 21. But Kenny, man, I got to give you props. Biggest mover tonight up 12 spots, you know, started almost dead last year tonight on the back row to walk away with a win beat John Ross because right now it's a pretty close race, especially now walking away from here with you and Ross with three rounds to go. That was impressive to see from you here tonight and how are you feeling with three rounds left? Yeah, I'm feeling I'm feeling good after getting a getting a win. We got some points back on on John. Not not too many since he finished behind us, but you know, some this you know cut a little bit of his lead. So, you know, I'm feeling confident coming into the last three races, and hopefully we can have uh, some good finishes and things go our way. But who knows? You know, John's a great driver, and he's shown uh, he has a lot of momentum in the playoffs so far. So we'll see what happens. That he does. But, Kenny, hopefully you'll have a lot of momentum with a win here tonight. I mean, we got Nashville, Michigan, and Kansas left on the schedule. Which of those three tracks are you hoping for the best result at or which one are you feeling the most confident rolling into? Um, probably Michigan and Kansas. Michigan, I'm, I've always been pretty good at. Kansas is a pretty good track for me as well. So hopefully, Na it, Nashville, it it's it's been all right. It can really eat up the tires if you if you run it too hard. So we'll see how we do there. All righty. Well, appreciate all the insight, Kenny. Always a great time talking to you here in the booth and another victory down here in victory lane. I think this ties you with John Ross, I think with six wins on the season. So heck of a season nonetheless here, Kenny. But before we let you go, I got to hand over the mic to you down here in victory lane and thank who you got to thank either on the car, some of your teammates or maybe someone tuning on in with the broadcast. I just want to give all my teammates at uh, Piston Broke uh, Motorsports a shout out, you know, especially Frank for giving me that strategy call there at the end. Uh, all my teammates over at Boo Esports, all the admins for what they do for the league, you know, D uh, DTL Customs, uh, BG Graphics, Riptide Radio, and uh, you for putting on a, a good broadcast. All right, Kenny, well, I appreciate the kind words, and you, my man. Go celebrate down in victory lane, and I'll go wrap up with the post-race stuff, and we'll be down here to party like it's 1987. How does that sound? That sounds good. All righty, Kenny. You have yourself a great rest of the night, and we'll talk to you, I'm sure, again here during these playoffs. Thank you, brother. You have a good one. Thank you. That was our race winner, the 24 machine of Kenny Real getting the job done here tonight. So that would do it here. We'll run through tonight's finishing order and try and get everyone out at a decent time. Kenny Rio walking away with the win. John Ross in second. Frank Zingen rounding out the top three. AJ Cawthon will finish fourth. Fifth going to the 21 of Rob Lowell. Sixth going to the 46 of Eli Raposa. Seventh is the four of Brandon Guerin. Eighth is the five of Nate Katoa. Ninth going to the 30 of Reba Canton. And rounding out the top 10 will be the 51 of Dalton Powell. 11th going to the 31 of Christian Delgado. 12th will be the 6 of Johnny Parker. 13th is the 13 of Jason Wiley. And rounding out the field tonight will be the 43 of Leroy Cobblenets. Like the drivers mentioned before, we got to thank some people. Of course, 
first and foremost, all you guys tuning on in here live, especially if you subscribe, supported any way possible with the Turn 3 Race Network. We got to give you a shout out. All the replay viewers jumping on in here at a later date. Got to shout you guys out as well. And of course, the partners here at the 802 iRacing Lead, that of course being the Riptide Radio with the title sponsor here. We got BG Graphics, Out of the Woods Crafts, DTL Customs, and Leaf Guard all, of course, supporting this league and these drivers. Of course, speaking about the drivers, got to give them all a shout out. Coming out here on the Sunday nights, putting on a great show for us to enjoy. Of course, Turn 3 partnered with the Premier Setups. If you want some fast dirt setups, especially, or you know, you want to see what they have, be sure to check out Premier Setups with the link in the the description here tonight i've been brett the jet from turn three racing network be sure to check out turn three throughout the week as we have a lot of great broadcasters and a lot of great series covering some of the best sim racing action i racing has to offer so be sure to tune in because i believe on i want to say tuesday nights i'm sure i'll get a message about this it's either tuesday or thursday roger does 802 with the big block but i think they might have finished that as well so i might just be totally off here but be sure to tune in throughout the week as we have a lot of great stuff here on turn three racing network and folks i think that would do it here tonight from playoff race number four it is north wilkesboro in the books here so everyone take care stay safe have a good one and we will catch you in one week's time at the nashville super speedway you won't want to miss it. I've been Brett the Jet, and I flew by you. Have a good one.